Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. A common theme on this channel over the past few weeks is that many companies nowadays are pissing on your head and telling you that it's raining. They're not just pissing on you and telling you that it's raining, but they're telling you that you should be happy that it's raining because there's been a drought recently. So enjoy this yellow liquid that falls on you. And one of the unfortunate examples of this is with General Motors. General Motors has decided they're going to be getting rid of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in future revisions of their vehicles. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay allow you to attach your phone to your car and use the phone and bypass the interface of the car computer. The car computer often sucks for two reasons. A, the car computer is often going to require subscriptions to do things that you can do for free on your phone. One example of this is with Tesla. Tesla does not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you want to see live traffic data, that's $10 a month. Navigation is free, but live traffic data is $10 a month. Whereas you can use many Maps applications on your phone that will show you live traffic information at no cost to you. Uh, once they have locked you into their ecosystem, it is easy to then say, if you want these features, you have to pay for them because they give you no alternative app stores or no other ways to get to them. The second is that the car computer, 99% of the time, is a, is a complete pile of crap. This, there's a very good reason for this. If you buy a Toyota vehicle or a Cadillac or whatever else, you're buying the car. The computer is an afterthought. So the computer can suck. You're really buying the car based on reliability, gas mileage, price, this type of stuff, you know, handling, all that kind of thing. The computer can suck and you're fine. Whereas when you buy an iPhone or an Android phone, you're buying a personal computer with an operating system on it that's operated by a touchscreen. Like, that's what you're buying. That has to be good. If that sucks then that company is just, again, Google and Apple are not going to make the billions they do off of these products and being able to advertise in these products if the operating system sucks. So Google and Apple have an incentive structure to create a great operating system that fundamentally does not exist with the car manufacturer, which is why the car manufacturers will always be behind regardless of how much resources they put in it. They will still sell products even if it sucks. Uh, so what they're doing here is they're removing Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And the... The pissing on you and telling you that it's raining starts with a gentleman named Tim Babbitt, who is the head of product infotainment uh, GM. Uh, he said, and I quote, this is from CarTac, uh, CarPlay and Android Auto often encounter stability issues, leading to problems like bad connections, slow responses, and drop connections. When drivers face such issues, they tend to revert to using their phones, defeating the purpose of these phone mirroring programs. Babbitt's argument revolves around the idea that if drivers rely solely on the vehicle's built-in systems, they'll be less likely to pick up their phones, resulting in fewer distractions and enhanced safety. So they're not taking away this feature because they want to lock you into their own infotainment system, which will, let's be real, let's be real, will be filled with all sorts of subscriptions because that's what automakers do. Uh, and also stealing your data. Don't forget about that. A judge ruled that it's legal for automakers to download and store your text messages under a law, a privacy law without making it explicitly clear to you that you can't delete it when you start using the car. Um, they're taking this away not because they want to make more money, not because they want more of your data. Uh, they're taking it away for your safety. And this is something that I've talked about a lot in this channel going back three years ago when question one was going to be passed in Massachusetts. This was a right to repair law that would ensure that independent mechanics can still get access to what they need to fix your vehicle so you wouldn't be stuck going to the dealer every single time you needed a repair. Uh, what was the car manufacturer's response to this? That's not safe. You're going to get tracked. You're going to get abused in a parking lot. If you want sexual assault victims to be safe, then you'll make sure that no independent mechanics can work on your car. Uh, th this obviously failed. The right to repair bill passed in the landslide because most people were able to see through bullshit the same way that most people watching this video will be able to see through Tim Babbitt's bullshit. They are not doing this for your safety. There are many things that go wrong in trying to connect a phone to a car. For every one time something goes wrong trying to attach an iPhone to a GM car, there's probably 10 to 100 times that something has gone wrong with that car's infotainment system or just frustrated the user to the point where they don't use it. This is not a thing. Safety issues because Android Auto or CarPlay have disconnected is not a thing. If people are going to use their phone because of that, I guarantee you they're still going to stare at their phone because your car infotainment system sucks and they don't want to deal with it. You are not making people more safe by removing this feature. You are lining your pockets. Somebody came out right after this to try and save a little face because what Tim Babbitt said sounded completely ridiculous and presented something that is at least, um, how do I say, a more polished layer of bullshit.
This person said, The primary reason is that we're looking to create a comfort level around the EV charging experience. With Android Auto or Apple CarPlay environments, the vehicle energy model or road segment data is still sending energy usage and everything associated with it to the phone. And it's pretty difficult to offboard it from the phone, Buff explained. So what we have built into the Blazor's EV infotainment system is really accurate data around battery health and battery monitoring and everything else that comes with it. And as you get into the mapping, it does route planning extremely well. For example, if we were to drive from here, San Diego, to Las Vegas, almost instantaneously the car is able to plot out a route that looks at not just the state of the vehicle, but the state of the charges along the route. It's also going to start the battery preconditioning as necessary, so when you reach a DC fast charger, you're actually at the optimal temperature to start using the full charging capacity. Okay, first thing. So aside from the, uh, we're going to do the mapping separate from the battery information. You could have your Android Auto screen and Apple CarPlay screen, and then you could have your dash, which shows you battery health information, including information like how many watt hours per mile are you using, how many watt hours per mile are you using on average over a five mile period, 10 mile period, 15 mile period, how many watt hours per mile are you using instantly. That's all stuff that's very easily configurable. I can configure this kind of crap on a, like, on a freaking cycle analyst uh, for, for my bike. So surely you can have a screen that is separate from the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay screen that is usable for that type of battery information. The idea that you, having Android Auto or Apple CarPlay makes it more difficult to relay this information to the customer is really conflating two separate issues that I just don't appreciate. The second is the navigation. There is a point there. Let's say that hypothetically speaking, Speaking, hypothetically speaking, that it was impossible to relay this information to the phone for navigation purposes, who cares? Who cares? Like, truly, honestly, if I want to have that type of data, maybe I'll use your maps. If I'm making an eight-mile trip that I need navigation for, I'll use my phone. Why are you moving my choice there? If I've charged my car to 80%, why would I care about whether or not I have charging data on the screen or battery information on it when I'm using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Do I not get that choice? Again, I don't, sometimes I do 300, 600, 900 mile road trips. I drove here from New Hampshire when I moved from New Hampshire to Texas. Sometimes I do some really long road trips. But 99% of the time, like I'm, I'm going to the grocery store, I'm going to work. Like these are, these are four to 17 mile trips that really do not necessitate that you remove all this functionality that's useful 99% of the time for a use case that I have 1% of the time. If that use case is relevant, if I want to be able to know exactly which charger I should go to and exactly how much range I have based on the watt hours per mile that I'm using, based on my driving style and all that kind of stuff and have that type of navigation, I'll use your system when I want. But the other 99% of the time I'm not because you're probably gonna do some sort of slimy, underhanded BS like with Tesla. That we, again, you can't connect your phone to the car we haven't, but we have navigation in the car, so you don't need it. Oh, but are you on traffic data? That's ten dollars a month. See, that, that's what people are trying to avoid. It, it's it's not about giving giving us a better experience, nor is it about safety or security or any of this type of garbage. In my opinion, it is about locking users into a system where they cannot use their phone, so that they have to pay a monthly fee to get access to what they could get access to for free. It's about increasing subscription revenue. In my opinion and nothing else. I don't believe for a second that they give two shits of a crap about the user experience. Users will also be able to have incoming messages read out loud to them via Bluetooth while also responding appropriately. The last one is kind of tricky for iPhone users since they'll need to enable notifications during the Bluetooth pairing process. In addition, users will still be able to use their phone's built-in assistance like Siri or Google Assistant using Bluetooth pass-through. The same function will also enable previously available features like Siri Eyes plus natural interactions like Hey Siri along with their respective Google equivalents. The accuracy to create a great experience is super vital that it's driven by the vehicle, Buffa added. That comes from GM Authority. I will link that blog down below. It's an excellent website. Again, the accuracy needed to create a great experience. It's super vi vital that it's driven by the vehicle. W what accuracy? What are you talking about? Again, like, w what are you talking about? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? I, I, the only thing that I can imagine that he means is navigation and being able to see what hours per mile on the screen, approximately how much battery life I have left, approximately how many miles I have left based on that. And it is completely possible to put that information on the dash while I have everything else, like the music that I have on, the map, everything else over here. And if I want to use your navigation system, my friend, I will choose to use your navigation system. And if I want to use my system, I can choose to use my system. What you're doing is you're not talking about having a more accurate experience by it being driven by the vehicle. You're talking about taking our options away. And let's be real. If this is not what that was about, then you would add all this cool functionality, but simultaneously allow people to choose to be adults, be grown-ups to use Android Auto 
in Apple CarPlay. Maybe if you really cared, you'd even have some sort of system where you could sync it, where when I'm using Google Maps or Organic Maps or Waze or Apple Maps or whatever I'm using on my phone, the car can tell, oh, this is the address that you put into that system. By the way, I'm just going to let you know, just in case you forget, that here's where you should charge. This is the thing. I'm a user. I'm a big boy. I can make a choice. I charge my car that has 300 miles of range to 90%, and I have an eight-mile road trip. So I don't care about all this extra stuff. In that moment, I care more about not having to pay an extra subscription fee to get access to a lower quality user interface than one I could get with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. All we ask is that you be honest. Don't piss on our heads and tell us that it's raining. Stop that shit. Again, when it came to innovation, this is something I talked about in a recent video. Innovation is a dog whistle for screwing you over. They talked about innovation in this blog post on VMware's website uh, like approximately 10 or 12 times. And this is not what this had to do with it. Again, innovation has nothing to do with this in spite of the fact that it keeps showing up. Continuous innovation, continuous innovation, 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 innovation. What this was actually about was trying to go from 4 billion to 8 billion by getting more people subscribing. That's what they said on their earnings call. Be honest that that's what you're doing. That's all I ask that you do. Don't tell me it's for my safety. Don't tell me it's for my security. Don't tell me it's for my accuracy because all of this stuff can be done without taking away my freedom, without taking away what I used to have. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you more or less likely to purchase a General Motors vehicle into the future knowing that they've taken away Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for your safety, for your accuracy? Because we just trust us. It'll be better though. And further, do you believe that this will lead to less features locked behind paywalls and subscriptions? Or more features that used to have a free lock behind paywalls or subscriptions? Curious what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.